Um, probably I can show you some cha-cha-cha <laughs> moves, but uh, not those ones. Yes, um, I'm, I'm, I was born in Mexico, but I'm, I'm based here in Singapore now. So uh, I want to really thank IDA for inviting Microsoft to this event. And I'm very blessed to be here in this country. Uh, one of my motivations of being here is to learn from you guys. Uh, it's, it's really impressive uh, being touring and working for Latin American countries, especially for, my, for Mexico. But it's, uh, it's impressive what you're doing here in Asia, specifically Singapore. So my motivation to be here is to learn from you guys. So, all right, so let me show you a very quick video, very quick video, just to put in context the rest of my presentation. Right. Welcome to Johannesburg International Airport. Please approach the road to create your pickup zone. video, very short video, actually you can actually Bing it in Microsoft. It's a, our envisioning videos that we have. <laughs> if you look at the video, what we saw was what? Technology, immersive, in our daily life, right? Easy to use, affordable for everybody, right? So it resonates pretty well with the, the mega trends you're, you're you, you have here in front of you. So what is a mega trend? Right? A mega trend is it's technology that is changing again the way we do everything. The way we work, we have fun, we study, we do everything. Actually some analysts like IDC call it the third technology revolution. I would say an evolution rather than a revolution. First, you guys are too young, but um, the first revolution was mainframes. Second evolution was the PC. So if you look at that first step, we democratized, democratized technology. So mainframes were for very few people and governments that could afford to buy these amazing, huge machines. When we introduced, well, when they introduced the PC, we made a huge change in the way we consume technology. So now, we're facing the third evolution. Uh, definitely, it's something that is not There you go. Those are the full negative. So you, you can, it's very difficult to, to isolate one of the four. They combine, right? It's very difficult to say mobile using devices without the cloud. Impossible almost to say social networks without the cloud. And big data everywhere. So this, is, this combination is explosive, right? And if you look at some of the data, some of the, of the stats I'm presenting, almost 50% of the fun 
of these mega trends are, is happening in Asia. Right? Almost 50% of smartphones, mobility, of, of the consumers in the cloud, of the big data that is being originated, and the social networks, the consumers, subscribers, users of the social network. So this region is really vibrant. You agree with me, right? Two thirds of the population live in Asia. So it's very cool, but we still have some challenges and some gaps because we need to bring everybody to this party. All the citizens of the world should have access to these mega trends. We don't want to leave them behind. Right? So we still have some challenges here. One important piece of the mega trends is the cloud. Because the cloud glues everything, right? How can you connect your device or your car if you don't have internet connectivity or connectivity? How can you access Facebook if you don't have, or Twitter, if you don't have internet or connectivity? So the cloud becomes an essential part of these mega trends. But the cloud, I will talk a little bit further about the risks. But when we say cloud, I'm thinking about a trustworthy cloud. A cloud that is responsible enough to be secure, to protect my data, my privacy. It's not just the cloud, right? Because imagine that all of these things are happening because we have this wonderful connectivity. Connectivity is oxygen for the cloud. It's oxygen for all these megatrends. So there's another interesting challenge that we're also facing in developing countries, not in Singapore. You guys are very lucky. But in other developing countries, we're still facing challenges with oxygen. Without oxygen, I can't deploy any of these things. So how's the cyber, how do we look at the cyberspace today and in 10 years? <coughs> 10 years is nothing, right, for us, for human beings, but it's a decade. But for technology, it's a millennium compared to human beings. So cyberspace in 2025, and I like this idea of 2025, because Singapore's ICT master plan is 2025. And that's some of the things I love about Singapore again. You're thought leaders, you have a vision. Very hard to see if any other government in Asia, some or some exceptions in Asia, but in Latin America, I can really tell you, it's very difficult to see a government that lasts five years ahead. Five. You guys are saying, let's have a vision in the next 10 years. Wow. In 10 years, the cyberspace will have 90, roughly, a little bit more, 90% of internet users in developed countries, and roughly 70% in developing countries. Is it okay? 90 and 70? Depends. I don't think so. I think we have, a, we have to accelerate the pace there. And it has to be, we need to bring connectivity, oxygen, that is affordable for everybody. Right? Steve Leonard mentioned something that I loved yesterday. We need connectivity, we need internet access for everything we do, anytime, anywhere. But we have the option to disconnect, right? And that's something that we always have to bear in mind, that 
technology is the tool. It's just the tool. It's the mean for another end. The end is how we make Singapore the most efficient, modern, innovative country in the world. And we use the tools to do that. Sometimes we forget in technology that technology is just for the sake of it. It's very cool, yeah, this new gadget, this phone. What is important is how I use technology, how I consume it. And for government, who have a very difficult challenge, they need to balance, right? They need to balance the decisions of today for the ICT 2025 master plan. Right? They need to balance these decisions today to have a bright future for the citizens, again, because technology is the mean to an end, and, but they also need to take care of other things like cyber security, right, and risks. It's an interesting balance. But after reading the ICT master plan here, I would say that Singapore is in the right track. Four point seven billion users, internet users, sixty percent of consumer electronics, four point billion mobile internet subscriptions. And basically, almost all the information will reside on the cloud. What happens if we have a problem with the cloud? Right? That's the kind of things that we need to think today for a brighter future. OK. This is a little bit of what I mentioned. Right? This is the tricky part when you design public policies in governments. We, you need, again, to serve the citizens, the elderly, the young generations. It's a huge challenge, right? But also we have huge opportunities, right? We also, we mentioned the cloud, the beauty of the cloud, I mean, the cost reduction. I mean, for governments, it's, I, think, I would say that it's very obvious. But I'm not thinking about only governments. What about entrepreneurs? What about small and medium enterprises? Now they have the possibility to have access to technology that is affordable. Because you pay as you use it. Wonderful. So if I make more money, I pay more. Yes, exactly. But that is not hurting the bottom line of the small and medium enterprise. Right? This is accelerating them is giving them this opportunity to compete in a global world with the big boys. Same with governments. Developing countries that don't have the resources to build their data centers, infrastructure, now they have the, this incredible possibility to deploy citizen services using the cloud. So it's no brainer. It's agile, elastic, Transformational, you can transform a, human, a whole country by investing in the right technology. Modern, yes, but more than modern, efficient. I, I'm a taxpayer. I want my government to be efficient. So that comes with modernization. And the balance? we have some security, right? If the cyberspace, everything, we rely on the connectivity, on the internet, on the cloud service provider. We expect as citizens as, or consumers that my information is well kept, secure. And probably, and this is something important, I need to, as a cloud service provider, like Microsoft and others have come here, we need to comply. We need to comply to the law, right? You have laws in Singapore around data protection, about security, information security. Microsoft needs to comply to it. 
But not only that, we need to create trust. Trust. Trust is a very critical word. How do you build a trustworthy cloud? Well, by following the law, by complying to the law. That's one ingredient. Two, by being transparent. I want to be as transparent as possible with my service level agreements. Right? So you know what to expect from your from me. And it's not only that I'm responsible. You are also responsible when you put your information in the hands of a third party. You're also responsible. So it's a co-responsibility. Right? But look at all the benefits. Privacy again, law, security, sorry, privacy, security, so that's the third angle, right? And um, actually, one interesting um, situation here in Singapore is the new cloud certification or standard that all cloud service providers need to comply to. So Microsoft, of course, will comply to the multi-tier cloud standard similar, to provide cloud service. So that's this, this ingredients that we need to provide you guys so you can trust our world. And again, the decisions of the government today will have impact in the next 10 years. So if Singapore today is the second most competitiveness, competitive nation in the world, probably it will become the first. I think what I'm seeing here is that Singapore will be the most competitive nation in the world. Right? 